Modern art from 115 to 122, to, from 1850 to 1900, and deal with this idea of modern art. All right, modern is um, modern art is from the modern world, and our first work is going to be Olympia number 115. But a quick review of what modern means. I think the easiest way to deal with modern is remember art follows history. Egyptians are are religious; their art is religious. The modern world is full of change and the art will be full of change. So we have a huge change in society with the Industrial Revolution and the 1850s. Okay, technology. The camera comes in, lots of technological changes. Okay, first thing on the camera, you have a machine that can do this. Do artists need to do this? All right, big, big shift in art. The Greek naturalism, Renaissance, and then believe it or not, this one here, and that's by Monet. That's the one that really made him famous. But here's our work, Olympia. What do we remember about Monet? First thing, he breaks convention. He breaks the rules. Now, speaking of rules, art at this time is very academic, meaning from the academy, meaning you want your painting in this salon, and that's how you sell your painting and make money. It should have. There were very strict rules as to what art should be. It should be about history in the classical. It should be about Napoleon, and it should have um, linear perspective and natural form. So what is this, and what is this? This is Olympia. So what is Manet doing? And the other thing, he is the first modern artist. He's part of the avant-garde. He will challenge the salon, and his art will look very different from the salon. A couple big points on so modern art is new. It's different looking. A couple big points on modern art, just to be aware of themes. Modern art asks questions. It's not about beauty, but it will start to ask questions. Second thing, modern art, they want you to see the paint. It's not a perfect um, illusion. They want you to see the paint, and it will abstract. Okay, back to our painting here, Olympia. What's going on with Olympia? Well, first, let's keep it simple. Traditional art is naturalism. It's ideal. Modeling is a technique on the skin to make it look beautiful and ideal and have shading and depth. And they use linear perspective. He will reverse all of those. Uh, if you look at it, the linear perspective here is off. He doesn't use linear perspective. But on the body, it's not ideal. It's more real. He does not model the skin. So what happens is he's broken all of these rules. And it's really not so much ideal as more than real. And speaking of the real situation, um, is she really a goddess? Um, why Questions of modern art. Why is it okay to do a nude like this, but not like this? So Manet is going to challenge the tradition of art, and it's going to catch on, and he's going to change art. And what's going to happen is um, there's going to be all the art going forward is going to look more like this and challenge art of the past than try to be more like the Renaissance art of the past. Okay, so a lot on there, but he really changes art. Okay, now, art will change from here on out. Impressionism, Monet, train station number 116. All right, we have a new building, the train station, a new city of Paris. We have our theme of change and also change in technique. Look how different the art looks. It's all about the light and the optics. Uh, some people say you can't even see it because of the smoke. This kind of art becomes very popular, sells a lot. They make a lot of money. Technique-wise, clearly not linear perspective. Choppy brush, flat, but pretty. Visual truth is just what are you really looking at when you're looking at um, a pond. So these, the impressionists really kind of get us to just look at light and optics, and they are just a new kind of art. And it's very popular, and it catches on. And uh, the, the impressionists, by the way, were just a group of artists in Paris, painting Paris of that time. Speaking of Paris, the middle-class bourgeois, we take that for granted, but this is new. Middle life in Paris, and they celebrate it. This is the new train station. This is the new Paris. This is the new art. Okay. Then, well, now we got the isms back and forth. Things will change rapidly. Post-impressionism gets tired of that. We'll go to Van Gogh, Gauguin, and Cezanne. On post and then our next work is Starry Night by Van Gogh. Van Gogh is a post-impressionist, but a couple things here. There's color people and line people. 
He's a color guy. What does that mean? He will use color to express. Van Gogh, also another theme is inner vision of the artist. The night doesn't really look this way, but it feels that way. He's a genius. He's able to capture the feeling of the night. Technique-wise, impasto is thick, thick paint. Inner vision of the, of the artist, and he captures the feel. He captures the feel of his room. And you can see the thick strokes. Doesn't really look that way, but we can feel it. Starry Night, he painted from his asylum out his window, and he really gets you to feel the night. His friend was Gauguin, and this one here, he also is a color guy. You can see he uses color to express. Also, clearly not naturalistic. Um, abstracted, flat. What does flat mean? That's not linear perspective. It's not natural form, but it's beautiful. And it's a celebration of, of, of non-Western culture. And it is um, abstracted. And it's a good example of post-impressionism. Okay. Cezanne. Post-impressionist, but not a color guy, a line guy. What does that mean? Cezanne, what is he? What is he? He's analyzing the way we see and experience the world. He painted this mountain over and over and over again. When you look at a mountain, what are you really seeing? Does it really look like this or more like this? He argued the latter. Okay, multiple points of view. What does that mean? Cezanne, this guy's deep. He's arguing that when you walk by the mountain, your eye is really getting multiple points of view, not one. And so multiple points of view is this kind of odd, incomplete look of the mountain. The other thing he said is when you really look at it, really, really look at it and break it down, it probably comes and turns into shapes. He's going to influence the cubus. This is deep here, but here we go. Look at something in your room. Cezanne would say, if you look at something in your room, it's a mental model in your mind and it looks nice. The reality of the thing in your eye is it looks more like this. He's, ex he's, what, when you watch TV, if you break it into pieces, you see pixels. So uh, when he does, um, he uses warm and cool colors. What does that mean? This is not linear perspective. He's using color to show depth. So in the end, he says, when you look at a mountain, it's more like this than like this. So it's going to be flat, simplified, maybe some planes of color in here. And that's his incomplete mountain is actually an exploration of how we see a mountain. All right. Then our next one is Cassatt. She was famous for, uh, she admired Japanese art. And Japanese art is flat and, and um, has patterns and is pretty and is not linear perspective. Also, that's the Japanese, from the Japanese woodblock. She loved Japanese art. Her art kind of captures that. It's kind of flat. It's pretty. Also, she captures a woman's point of view in life. And uh, this is a woman here, Cassatt. She hung out with the Impressionists, but she was not an actual Impressionist. She brings a little bit of Japanese woodblock style to art. All right, then we'll get to uh, Expressionist, the scream. And this is pretty straightforward. You feel this way. I know you might feel this way right now. All right, what's going on here? This is not naturalistic. It's not natural human form. It captures the feeling, the way we feel. It expresses a state of mind inner vision of the artist. So he is clearly a color guy and an expressionist. And that brings us to the 20th century. We'll cover on the next one.